hear what he said. Yeah, the car is different. I think that's where they were going with that, isn't it? They really wanted to show how good that car was, showcase it in its best possible way. OK, well, let's, as we were saying, start Monty on Thursday night with uh, that incredible scene. So what a week it has been, the gorgeous Monte Carlo. And you saw all the fans absolutely lining the streets there. Prince Albert out greeting our drivers and co-drivers. The start ramp, it was impressive. It's always impressive in Monte Carlo, isn't it, Jenny? Yeah, mind-blowing, isn't it? And uh, it's a very, very special way to, to kick off the year in front of the fans. Royalty there, as you say, Prince Albert. And um, there was a lot of waiting around for the drivers. They just wanted to get going at this point. And, um, but there's, there's no question that's a very special way to, to kick off the year. You made it. Yeah, I made it. Crikey, what a <laughs> stage that was. Unbelievable stuff. I'm buzzing. Yeah, absolutely incredible. And imagine you're buzzing what Cyril Levitel and Thierry are. All right, well, we, we're starting down in Monte Carlo. Of course, you just saw the Thursday night. What a week I had as well. I started off my week uh, <clears throat> on a boat. <laughs> yeah. Not me on the boat, that's me in um, the Automobile Club, which was equally as awesome, Chenny. Absolutely incredible. I mean, you've been in there before, of course, many, many times, but so many rally cars there, so many rally Monte Carlo memories. And the fascinating thing is Valerie that showed me around there. She says, oh, I, I was a co-driver for Didier, or Didier Oriol as well. I was like, what? Yeah. Every, every time I met someone, they were a co-driver for someone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're all, everybody sort of down in that region. It's very, very rally driven, isn't it? But yeah, it's a very special place, that museum. And we just saw that 6R4 there. Some very nice kit. There's a former Sebastian Loeb winning car in there as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a cool place. And did you see on Thursday night that they had Sebastian Noje's car down there as well? Now, um, I was talking about the fans. The fans are definitely out here for Sebastian Noje. You made a joke to me last night. He said, oh, they've come for da da da. And, and then uh, as soon as Noje comes, they just start screaming don't they yeah i mean sebastian Auger is a hero to these people you know this is this is this is where he grew up this is his hometown here in gap so you know he he's a, he's an absolute hero to me it's been a difficult weekend for sebastian Auger. you know there's some been some personal things going on with him as well and he and he's and he's had to dig really deep to get the result that he has and uh, it's a mark of a true champion and, and as you say the fans absolutely love him whenever he turned up whenever he was in service and he was absolutely rammed down at Toyota and, and the same at the media zone as well so the fans have played an enormous part in this weekend yeah let's uh, remind ourselves of what they've been up to oh, since two, uh, three hours Three hours ago. So yesterday, um, 14 o'clock. 14 o'clock. Uh, two hours. Two hours maybe. ago. Two hours. Three hours. Ten hours. Ten, Ten hours. hours. In the morning. Yes. Last yes. uh, uh, I don't 16. speak English. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Treze. At 19h. At 19h. We arrive at 19h. It's not 19h. Ah, yeah. 16h. 16h. We arrive at 16h. For around about one uh, one hour. One hour, one hour in the afternoon you come here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did you come from? Holland, the Netherlands. Yes. Um, Czechy Neuville, Belgique. Belgique. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Now, those were up on the stages. We had so many people out, as you've seen this weekend, up there. I like the one fan that doesn't know what time it is. We've all been there once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you know what? We've seen so many fans streaming in. But the atmosphere on Thursday night. You know, people pay thousands and millions of pounds to create atmospheres like that. Thursday night, the fireworks, the flares. I, it's impossible to imagine that the fans did that of their own accord. Yeah, it's phenomenal, isn't it? I mean, that is some show, isn't it? But that's just what it means and um, to, to, to the fans of this sport. Look at that. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be very, very hard to replicate that throughout the rest of the year. I'm sure the other rallies that we go to, the fans will do their very best to try and better it because they are the most passionate motorsport fans in the world for me. You know, we've been so lucky to experience rally fans and these guys, they leave nothing on the shelf, do they? they when they throw a party, they throw a hell of a party and boy, was it a party on Thursday night. And again, for us, the images that came from the first two stages were phenomenal. That was the way to start the week. While Sebastian Loeb might not have been with us, in terms of rallying, but he can't miss out. He just, he just couldn't miss out. <laughs> Take a look. He was wandering around. The
go. <laughs> now Taka spotted him. Taka was waving at. Oh, right, OK. So Takamoto Katsuta spotted Sebastian Loeb Taka in the... was Taka was waving, pointing, waving, saying, the goats come to see me. Wow, OK, <laughs> then. Well, there you go. I mean, I, I remember seeing... Look, the... look, oh, look! OK, <laughs> okay I see what we've done there. I see what we've done there. Some trick editing. There you go. But uh, he can't stay awake, can he? And I wonder what he's going through his mind there, uh, Kiri, because that man is obviously a multiple world champion, one of the most successful drivers, the most successful driver uh, in the World Rally Championship that we have, we have ever seen. And, and to stand by the, stage, the, the side of the stage and watch the cars come through, I wonder, was he thinking... I wish I was in the seat. Well, to be fair, every weekend when I can't find Yerry Matty for an interview, I know where he's gone. He's popped up to the stages as well. He loves a good visit to the stages. And I think, you know, if you can't be driving, you may as well be part of it in some way. Just a fantastic atmosphere, you know, and just soaking it up. And it is different. You know yourself, obviously, being down in the service park, it's amazing. But once you're at the end of the stage or in with the fans, the atmosphere is just like nothing else. Yeah, absolutely. You're dead right. We always, you know, we've always said Craig Breen and Yari Matty Latvala, they weren't just involved in the sport. They were also the biggest fans of the yeah. sport, you know. And Yari Matty is no question. He absolutely loves it. And any opportunity he gets, you're dead right. He'll be in the car and out down to the stage to <laughs> watch what's going on so yeah again it's what makes it so special <clears throat> did we expect wrc to blow up like that straight away what an incredible wrc2 sorry I, I didn't add the two wrc2 blow up like that just what an incredible battle from so i don't even know how many times the lead changed now nine nine, nine times you did it you eight, did it eight coming into this stage uh, we're looking at nikolai grise in here and um, yeah he's put on a phenomenal performance throughout the entire weekend there's no question about that and uh, Predominantly, it was himself and Pepe Lopez that were that were fighting for the lead. Johan Russell, he started to drop away a little bit yesterday, didn't he? And we, we were thinking, well, this is now turning into a Grias and a two -way Lopez fight. fight. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you can't, but you can't second guess this sport. And um, yeah, Grias and just dropping away a little bit this morning. Pepe Lopez responded, didn't he? And he did a spectacular job as well. He came into the stage this afternoon, separated by just nine tenths of a second. And um, yeah, I think he's done a spectacular job. Job. He has been certainly. You know, we put it out to the to social. Who's been your your hero? And and, and it has been Pepe. So um, yeah, it's been it's been fan spectacular from Pepe Lopez. No question about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think you know. Were we expecting it? Were we not? You know, you never quite expect such a spectacular performance. And, you know, that that has been, like you said, absolutely stunning performance to open up his season. Yeah, as I said, he, you know, he came into the stage leading by uh, just nine tenths of a second, and probably at the start of the weekend, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have hedged our bets. Yeah, you that's where you I know. was going with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's certainly experience-wise at this level, he hasn't got the same as uh, as Nikolai Gryzin and Johan Rossell, but um, he turned up, didn't he? He turned up on Thursday night and, and straight away he arrived with a big bang. So, yeah, great job from him. Yeah, and Johan Rossell, like you were saying, we, we almost counted him out last night a little bit. I think uh, when Terenzio was on the phone talking tyres, there was a little hint that something could be coming. But, you know, what a way to finish up. But we do know the class of Johan Rossell. Yes, he saved, certainly saved the best for last, didn't he? And uh, as you said yesterday, he kind of dropped away a little bit, didn't he? But he's come out this morning. He was in, it was an inspired tyre choice. He bolted a couple of super softs onto that car, took a little bit of a gamble. It paid off for him. Nikolai Gryzin dropped time, and Johan was suddenly back in the fight and uh, found himself uh, just nine-tenths of a second behind Pepe Lopez and had to put in the absolute stage of his life. He cooked the front tyres by the time they got to the end of the stage. He said, I've got nothing left on the front. The car was starting to understeer, but, yeah, he gave it absolutely everything he could. And, and um, you what know, he's... stage time he pulled out. Yeah, it was phenomenal, and it was a deserved win. And, um, you know, he, he, he's, um, and he's, he's, he's won this rally... Uh, on pure pace alone. Last year it was a gimme because Nikolai Gryzin got a, a penalty. And you can see the emotion. You can see what it means to him. That's yeah. phenomenal. A great drive. And any three of those men deserve to win this rally. But yeah, it but, went the way of Johan Rossell. But also the, the amazing thing about that is that, like you said, Gus Greensmith not here. Oliver Solberg wasn't scoring. We've got the Sammy Pyro. We've got a whole nother mix of drivers to add in to that fight. It is just going to be an incredible fight. Now, we do have a new award for WRC2, which is our Forum 8 award about how many stage wins you get. Now, we'll just have a look at this. It went to Pepe Lopez, but just have a look at him receiving his awards. Ladies 
and gentlemen, welcome to the presentation of the Forum 8 WRC2 Most Stage Wins Award. Forum 8 trophies presented to Pepe Lopez by Peter Toole, Senior Director of Sport at WRC Promoter. Manager at WRC Promoter. Huge congratulations. Please put your hands together. Showing how many stage wins, how close he was to winning that. He's won the most amount of stages with that Forum 8 award. That just shows how much Pepe Lopez controlled this rally. Yes, and, and as I said, he was, he's, he's done a spectacular job and, and um, that, that's a, kind of a small consolation prize, uh, Kiri, because he knew that he was in the fight and, to, and you could see the disappointment when he got to the end of the stage not to win this rally. Yeah. It was so, so close. As I said, any three of those, those men deserved it. But it goes to show that award is, is, the, is the work rate that he has put in this weekend. You know, he has been, he's won the most stages in the WRC2 class, done a great job. And, and again, for me, the most exciting thing is... <laughs> This is just round one. I it's know. just going to get better and better when Gus turns up. Oliver, Oliver's scoring points. Yep. He's had a bit of a nightmare this weekend, hasn't he? But Oliver's scoring points. It's just going to get better and better. Trust me. I feel like I should have fashioned you some kind of award for work rate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Next time, next time, I'm going to make you a little... It won't be as glamorous as the Forum A, but I'll fashion you <laughs> I'll one. I'll take whatever I can get. <laughs> All right. Well, Andreas Mikkelsen, it has been a long while since he has been in the top class. He made it back this weekend. And what a fantastic day debut it was. We have kept an eye on him all weekend. Take a look. First of all, this, this rally, you know, just enjoy. Uh, get used to the car. No one really expects any big result this weekend. Uh, let's see you know, in, the, in the next couple of events that we will do, but yeah, I, uh, for sure I want to do well, but uh, I need a seat time, so I uh, tried to find the balance uh, there this weekend. Ah, yeah, always with the night stages as well, you're always very nervous before the first stage. So, And I, I, I guess for me, especially this year with a new car, a new team, uh, everything is new, so I have to get used to stuff and you start in the dark. Luckily there's not so much ice, so that will just even add to the excitement, but uh, I have I'm more than excited already. Uh, step by step, getting back into the rhythm. Uh, because, you know, I, I think I'm breaking late, but still, you know, I have to go on the throttle again and then break even later, so... Yeah, a lot of adjustments needs to be done to be proper quick in these cars. It's still accelerating on the injury of the corner, so it's, I can never trust it. So it's really, yeah, I, uh, then I'm very reserved, you know. It's been four or five years now since I've been in a car like this. So, yeah, I just have to take my time, uh, use this rally as good as possible because I don't want to be in the forest and then use the, the next rally to, to learn a car. I, I need to learn a car during this event so I can be performant on the, on the next event. We've seen Andreas Mikkelsen within support category for the past four years. He is a WRC event winner at the highest level and he returns to the top flight now. It is a learning curve. Yes, he's won rallies and you know, we look back at the... Oh, we could see in his face he was concerned. He's outbreak himself. I uh, didn't know it was ice in the corner. We had it as dry. So, uh, yeah, and then we just flew off the road. So, very lucky. Okay, we were um, one second plus per mile per kilometer. Now we're half a second, so we have to gap. Now I'm getting more used to it. It feels more natural to dive into corners with uh, with higher speeds. 
Because I'm, uh, I'm used to the limit uh, for four years straight to be completely different. So now the limit is just so much further and I can uh, go so much faster into the corner. So yeah, it took a day to, uh, to get it changed. Uh, but already now I'm, uh, I'm feeling a lot more confident and doing it, it feels more natural. That is Andreas Mikkelsen's debut back in a rally one car. And you've been saying it all weekend. I think he sort of said it at the end with Molly there as well. You know, it's just seat time. It's just getting used to it. But he, I think, was brought into Hyundai for many reasons, but one of them to, to bring it home because he, he's proved time and time again when things got tricky in WRC2 that he didn't make a mistake. He brought the car home. He he went past the people that made mistakes, and that's kind of what Andreas Mikkelsen is so good at. Yeah, he's, he's the, perf, the perfect night watchman, isn't he, I think, for the team. You know, he's got so much experience, I think. You know, he's done a spectacular job this weekend. It is a completely different car, Kiri. There's no question to what he has been, he's used to when, you know, back when he was driving in the WRC and, and then WRC2. A phenomenally different animal you know that the cars are slightly heavier obviously there's a hybrid which brings a completely different driving style into into play you have to learn how to use the hybrid how to get the most out of the regen when to do it and then of course the aero uh, and that was one of the first things that he said was i am braking too early because he wasn't using the aero to help slow the car down and um but gradually as the as the weekend has progressed we have been seeing the the difference in time from himself and the top guys get smaller and smaller so there's no question he has been getting better with with, with, with seat time and it would be unfair to say um, that he should have got here and been on the same pace as, as all Tanak and Thierry Neville with that experience. It wouldn't well, have been right. expectations were, bring it home. He did it. He achieved what was needed this weekend. All Absolutely. right, we haven't forgotten about it. We just had a whole lot to cover this weekend for the top three guys. Has just been incredible because we did talk, you know, about lead swapping a lot, but at one moment it looked like it was Elvin Evans. From Thursday night, it looked like Elvin Evans was in control of this party. Yeah, I mean, Elvin turned up on Thursday night and he was quickest out of the blocks, wasn't he? He won both stages on Thursday night in, in very, very difficult mm. conditions and um, all eyes were on the Welshman. Um, I, look, I don't think the pace dropped away. I said it in commentary. I, I just think that Thierry Neuville settled in and he started to get comfortable get with comfortable the car. They made some minor adjustments and, and dialed it in and, and, and Elvin... and they found the cracks in, in Elvin's pace. It's as simple as that. They, they caught him and, and passed him. And yeah, I mean, Elvin won those first two stages. He didn't win a stage again after that. Um, so he'll go away, um, I think, a little bit frustrated. Um, yeah. Third in the championship, but good points as but well. I think, it, yeah, exactly. When you look at those points, it was a 24 for Sebastian Auger, 21. That's, that's not a massive difference in those points. So walking away with 21 points, I think, yeah, it may be some cracks in his pace, but also I think he got in his own head a little bit. And I think maybe we'll look at it uh, as we go on the season. But I think... That, that just shows what he can do when he's feeling comfortable. So that's quite an exciting prospect for Elvin Evans. Sebastian Auger, we know the man can do it. But Thierry managed to just tip him on this point. But Sebastian Auger again, <laughs> second place. Yeah, phenomenal. And uh, under, as we said, under difficult circumstances for himself this weekend, uh, he's done a great job. And, you know, you can take nothing to get away from him. There were some... Again, it was, well, it was a reasonably slow start for Seb, and then, of course, there were pace note issues where the, the safety note crews had, had marked ice, and then when he got there two hours later, that ice had gone, but you have to follow your pace note. So he left a bit of time in the stage there, and that frustrated him, particularly on, uh, on Saturday morning. But this man is an absolute master of, of Monte Carlo. Um, yeah, leaves here with 24 points. Uh, a good points all and and as a result Toyota lead the the manufacturers championship by one point from Hyundai so you know for them that's a great start to the year yeah. and <laughs> and just coming back to Elvin Evans as well yes 
I mean, we, we can't take anything away from him either. He's finished third here. He's scored good points, only nine behind Thierry Neuville, and that's who he's looking at in this championship yeah. because it's a part program or a shared program between Sebastian Auger and Kelly Rovampera. And on some rallies this year as well, I'm told we might even see both of them together. Yeah, I'm not sure event. whether it's... I think they're both... They might be going... We've taken two part seasons, thank you very much. Yes, We're not absolutely. sharing a season. All right, well, talking about the man himself, but at some point it just clicked for Thierry. As Julian Porter always says, Saturday is the day for Thierry and Saturday certainly was the day for Thierry. It just separated him. He just worked and worked and the smile grew and grew. Yeah, he was phenomenal. It was as simple as that. And when, you know, we, we saw on Friday, yeah, he had that minor spin. Car got away from him. And uh, But other than that, it's been a pretty picture-perfect weekend for himself and for Hyundai. Um, Cyril Abitable was saying we've made some fairly significant changes to the car in the off-season. They've stiffened up the prop shaft. Uh, sorry, um, adapted the prop shaft, they've strengthened it because they had some issues with the prop shaft failing in Kenya. They've made the back of the car stiffer and that car has been on a on a mega diet and um, I spotted some ballast in a few places and that's a good sign as well because you can start to put the weight where you want it and that will obviously affects, affects handling. So I believe that Hyundai is really dialed in and, uh, and Thierry made the most of it this weekend. It's certainly very nice to see a driver of any discipline get to the end of a stage or the end of a race meeting and get out of a car as, as happy <laughs> as he was, wasn't it? And for Cyril Abitabal as well, you know, I think he had been keeping quite stum on the fact that, you know, they've made plenty of changes to that car and I think he just wanted to touch on it with his interview with Molly there and say, you know what, we know what we're doing. I think Cyril has played a, a, a key part to what's going on at Hyundai. We've seen some some turbulent years in the past, we we'll put it that way, and he's come in and he's taken control of the team, he's taken control of the situation and he's rallied the troops, no question about it, and he has been at the forefront of uh, of, of, of making those changes, making those positive step forward, bringing you know young talent into the team, some Ritz and fresh engineers, and um, uh, and some engineers, of course, with, with vast amounts of experience. FX, uh, Christian Lurio, all those guys, and um, yeah, they've you know the result is this: Thierry Neuville winning uh, winning Rally Monte Carlo. So yeah, Cyril Abitable, with no question, has been a uh, has been has been a, a key player in all of this and um, you know his job is to and it will probably get a little bit more difficult as the year progresses is to keep Thierry Neuville and Oitanak in particular in check yeah, or, it will, or it will be leaving him mega hungry and that's down to Cyril to keep him right. Indeed and also I think you know if that little mistake hadn't happened with Oit it might have been a different story and exactly what you're saying so Oit didn't get it his exact own way he wants it his own way as well so the battle between those two is going to be fierce it's an exciting team to be part of as of course it is in Toyota what uh, an amazing cluster of drivers that we've got at the top yeah I mean Hyundai have got a, a, an incredibly strong set of drivers haven't they and uh, and I think Thierry Neuville and and uh, and uh, and Oitanek are just going to get stronger and stronger. They can go. You can see him just spending a bit of time with his fans. And all the drivers do that. They remembering um, he is our only current driver with a full-time program that's a world champion. Yeah, it's true. Um, it was. Yeah, I mean, a little while ago. Uh, he, and um, I think, as you said, he's very, very hungry. He's a fighter. He never gives up. He never, ever, ever gives up. He's very, very keen to bring in some points, and he'll leave here probably hungrier than he arrived actually because now he'll be like all right well, i'll show you in sweden trust yeah. me well he showed us last year in sweden but what is to be expected from sweden this year take a look You can see what we've done here, right? Out with the old, in Just with the new. As well. <laughs> and it's not even in the right place. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Well, you get it. Rally yeah. Sweden's on the way. You're going to need your bubble hats. We cannot wait for another visit to the snow. It is going to be absolutely incredible. And like you just said, the battle is going to be on in Sweden. And we'll be seeing a few other drivers joining the lineup. So keep your eyes peeled for Sweden in just a couple of weeks. And yes, Jenny will look as fabulous as this in a hat. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I sort of fluffed that one for you, didn't I, guys? Sorry. But yeah, we're going to Sweden and, and a completely different place to, to Monte Carlo. It's a very unique challenge. All the first three rallies of this year are so unique, aren't they? With Monte Carlo, where the, the, the conditions are so changeable. Sweden, a full winter rally. The only time that we use uh, the full studded tyre, the, the winter tyre, the snow tyre there. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, Kenya as well. So three very unique renewed rallies to kick off the championship. Yeah. I can't wait to go to Sweden. It's one of my favourites of the year and, as well, one of the fastest. Yeah, and you get to count how many times I complain about being cold as well. It's exciting for everyone. <laughs> um, right, final thoughts on what I think has just been the most incredible weekend on all fronts, from the fans, from the competition, from the battles in WRC2. We couldn't have asked for more from this weekend. I think you've summed it up perfectly. You know, we, we couldn't have asked, asked for anything more. It's been, you know, we've seen phenomenal battles in, in the Rally 1 class. We've seen phenomenal battles in, in rally two and further down as well so it has been a, a spectacular uh, uh, start to the year and, and and of course there was the concern that we didn't have the snow and ice well actually it has had zero effect on this on this rally I actually think it's made it better so what a way to kick off the year and uh, congratulations Thierry Neuville yeah indeed all right well I'm very impressed at the use of phenomenal because I can never get that in so the amount you said it yeah I know but that's a one-off and I've been concentrating on it for a while well that word completely describes the magic of Monty well, from all of us, it is about that time that we say goodbye. But thank you so much for joining us for round one of the 2024 season. Make sure you check out all of our social media channels for the latest and greatest updates on what is going on in the WRC world. We'll be hitting Sweden in just a matter of weeks. But from all of us here in Monte Carlo, for now, it is goodbye.